Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get this 1962 Ford F100 4x4 back on the road. That's right, this was our second attempt at uh, Y-Block Explosions. <laughs> this one only had a small fire. It was stuck, we got it loose, didn't have enough compression to take off, so uh, that extra one that we got going in that video, we're finally gonna stick this thing in there a year later. But right now we just drug this thing in from the shop. We got a couple inches of snow just now. And uh, we've had several feet throughout the winter. So we're going to let this thing thaw. Don't say unthaw like every Midwesterner does because everybody outside of the Midwest gets mad because unthaw would be freezing. But that's what we say. And we say hot water heaters, even though they're water heaters. Duff, did any animals move in there since it was in here last? Kind of janked up the license plate when I was pulling her up here. Whoopsies. And this engine's been laying outside for a year, getting full of water. So hopefully that thing is not stuck. And uh, that was a struggle getting it out of the snow bank. Snow bank? Snow bank. Anywho, got it in. Destroyed the pallet in the process. And whatever else was in that snow bank in between us. I think there was some uh, 82 Chevy Suburban transmission cooler lines and cruise control stuff and whatnot. But... We got her out. Hopefully it's good. But I think uh, we're gonna let this thing thaw and I'm gonna go run some errands with Duff and we'll get back at this another day. <laughs> Well, we got this thing thawed and that too. Also, uh, don't let your engine tip over on its side and let all the oil run out of the dipstick, Jimmy, all over the floor. Not a floor dry fan, but when you got Exxon Valdez. One of the worst oil spills in US history. Depth of spills, you uh, sometimes gotta use the floor dry, don't you, Duff? Plus with all the snow, we get it real soggy, so we got ourselves a mess here. Also, I noticed that this thing uh, had these stupid oil lines that went from valve cover to valve cover. Sounds like it was an add-on deal. I asked the uh, Y-Block guy on the old Instagram, and he said some people added that. And we jacked that all up, pulling it out of the snowbank, so we'll probably have to steal those studs, and maybe even the valve cover got a little damaged off of that engine. Oh well. Such is life. There is another Y-Block in the snowbank. So we could use that one as well. But let's get the hood off of that thing. I seem to remember the hood on that thing is in really rough shape. We got to take that bumper extension off, which is fine because I don't have a winch for it. That was for a winch, I presume. Oh yeah, there's where the PTO shaft went. So if we're not going to have that, I'd like the bumper where it needs to be, or where it's supposed to be, where it was originally. So uh, Duff's going to check out what hardware we got to take off. And we're gonna get that off and the hood up because a cherry picker is barely long enough anyway. So, yeah, let's get after it. Anybody's got a good deal on an orange hood, let me know. Who knows of a good way to get hoods off there, so. They're so awkward. Just like us stuff. Well, yeah, this thing just slides right off. Get all the bolts out when I have a chance. Oh, crap. Why don't we take that license plate out before we start it? 
1985. Oh, I should not have these. None of the fun stuff. I guess uh, radiator, bell housing bolts, fuel linkage, fuel lines, heater hoses, clutch linkage, engine mounts, all the usual suspects. All right, here we go. Watch me work real fast. I don't know what I've ever pulled one of these out for. Have I? I don't think so. Might take me a bit. Not sure uh, what the camera caught, but got the carb off, all the front accessories off. Well, not all of them. Got the fan off, radiator out, all that good stuff. Got our coil unhooked. We got our oil temp, oil pressure, water temp, all that stuff undone. So pretty much, we just got to do the wiring for the Jenny down here. Do our engine mount, and then the exhaust. And I don't know how we're gonna split this. I think we're gonna split it at the bell housing or take the bell housing off the engine because I'm guessing that thing's out of a truck and it's gonna have a different bell housing. It's got a hydraulic clutch on it. This one's got a mechanical clutch. And uh, I think they said that one was in a truck. Anyway, that's where we're gonna split it. Right, wrong, or indifferent. But I didn't know what the camera caught, so I thought I'd get you up to speed because that's what Duff recommended I do. He said, the people need to know. All right, I did take a picture of these wires so I can figure out where the uh, ground and the field and whatever goes, but I'm guessing there's uh, some issues with the wiring. Maybe that's just for the horn. Oh yeah, that's just the horn wire, we're good. I think we're uh, wrapped up up here. Uh, Guess I didn't know that I got that engine plate on there. Those things are pretty dang handy. They're usually like 20 bucks. Don't even try to make one. They're probably up to 25 or 30 now with the uh, inflation. Get yourself one. I gotta go on to do the exhaust, that bell housing. Oh, we can get the engine mount up here. What's the beauty of this exhaust crossover is we only gotta unhook one exhaust pipe. So that's pretty handy. All right, I'm gonna get that uh, front engine mount cradle horseshoe thing. Here. Well, we got everything pretty much done under there. I think there was two, four, five bell housing bolts. One of them over by the starter is real hard to get at. Starter bolts were pretty loose. We got that off there. Starter wiring off. Obviously, if we got the starter off. It's laying right there. Uh, these stickers aren't actually too bad to pull. Good job on that one, Ford. And then what else are we doing under there? Oh, yeah, the exhaust. I'm going to get the torch out, put a little heat on those because they fight us. and. We could have snapped these off or torched them off because we're probably not going to use those manifolds, but we did it the right way, you know, for once. All right, the cherry picker hooked up. We're going to see how this goes. Tech tip of the day, get yourself one of these swivel hooks. I'm sure I've said it before, but maybe there's some new people on the channel. Makes life a whole lot easier if you got a swivel hook. Otherwise, if you're not pulling the engine and it's trying to... It's not so bad going out, but going back in, real nice. All right, Duff's tuckered out from watching me work. Get after it. Here goes nothing. And the pickup's going up. There it is. Let's give you the old walkie walk. Come on, baby. Why are you not coming out? I can see a gap between the bell housing. So it must be starting to go. What is holding you up? Clutch is undone. Yeah, just keep pulling. Something will go. Cheese and rice. Oh, you go underneath. Check her out, Duff. Oh, yeah. Let's get that last bolt out of there. That'll help. There's uh, 
four on this side. So we're going to take that last one out. All right. Missed the one on the bottom over there. Let's see what we got her now. Bada bing, a bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. Going up. What else did we forget? <laughs> we got that out, so I'm gonna celebrate with a uh, bush latte snow day. Look at those guys just playing with their ice hole there. It's limited edition. Big stretch duff. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Just kidding, it really wasn't. That thing came out surprisingly well. Knock on wood. Didn't really break anything. Only had to get the torch out to heat up a couple exhaust bolts, which is pretty standard around here. Now we got to uh, set those two side by side. I can already tell the front engine mount is different. Uh, we got to take the bell housing off of this one. We should probably address these uh, valve cover hold down studs while we got it out. We should uh, put a bar on it, make sure it still turns over. Uh, looks like we're gonna have to put the Jenny on this one. Looks like I bent the crap out of the brackets, dragging it out of the snow bank. What else? What else? I don't know. This has got these two engine mounts versus that uh, one's got that horseshoe cradle in the middle. And then I think we'll just, we'll cap those or loop them for now, the heater hoses, because Let's just get it running first. We'll put hoses on it, see if the heater core leaks. We know it's going to leak. They always do, don't they, Duff? And uh, steal a dipstick out of that one, too, because somebody bent this one all up. Was that you? You were guiding me out of that snowbank. All right. Then we can clean up this mess. But, I don't know. The sandwich tastes pretty good, and it's getting kind of late. Oh, yeah, we should probably swap that clutch. Or at least check to see if the splines are the same between the two. Man, that thing's got a girthy input shaft. Son of a biscuit. We bought zero new parts. Typically when you're doing this, you probably want to put uh, a new clutch in, obviously. Some new engine mounts. Which all this is is just a little biscuit rubber thing or my bopper. And it's uh, real bad shape. That's easy enough to change. Radiator hoses, should put those in. These are uh, 40 years old. They have, look like they have been replaced. The heater hoses had some of those tinny wire clamps, so those are probably original. Yeah, we will change oil on it though, most likely. We might stick plugs and wires in it, maybe. But most of that stuff's easy to do later. Other than the clutch, I'm probably gonna regret using whichever clutch I use, cause it's probably gonna suck. But it gets it on the road, tack with it. If you're planning a project like this, buy a new clutch. That's my uh, recommendation. But I'm gonna have a sandwich. Duff's gonna hang out on his rug here. We're gonna contemplate our decisions. I don't know if we're gonna work anymore tonight. Might see you guys tomorrow or the next day. It's a real short week here. I had meetings every night for work. I got my regular job. I gotta go out of town for work. I'm gonna look at a vehicle while I'm there because, you know, why not? And uh, kinda got a late start this week because uh, the king drug into this week. So hopefully this goes together in one night. Especially with all that swapping of stuff between the two engines, I don't know. Don't have much hope, so this might be a real incomplete project for you guys this week, but you guys wanted to see some projects, so here we are, projecting vomit all over your screen. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, we're back working on the uh, orange pumpkin Ford pumpkin smasher. I don't know, what do we, what do we call in this thing? Something to do with orange. The orange peeler, orange delight. I know you really want me to sing that afternoon delight song right now from Anchorman, so uh, Chin will put the clip in because that's as close as we can get. Sky rockets in flight. Woo! Afternoon delight. Whoop. So I think we're gonna pop the clutch off this thing, and we're gonna pull that front engine mount, and then this thing can just go sit in the corner or outside or whatever. And then we'll go pick up that other one. We gotta pop the bell housing off, swap the clutch, front cover. Oh yeah, we'll have to probably steal these studs. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna get this stuff blown off there. 
If you've never taken a clutch off before. Oh, this one actually looks nice and clean and newish. And the, that's your friction material in there. That looks pretty good. Ring gear. She's a little chewy right there because uh, these starters engage from that direction. They pull in because the starter's up there. So yeah, those teeth are a little chewy. But the rest look pretty good. Uh, it's just these six bolts. Two there, two there, two there. Pops that clutch off. And then it looks like on the engine mount, since we're showing you dumb stuff that you guys don't care about, looks like just these uh, four bolts there. Oh, of course, those are 5 16 and those are uh, 3 eighths. How silly is that, Duff? Silly Fords. Son of a biscuit, look at that. Remanufactured by specialists. That thing has like hardly any miles on it. I wonder if they uh, put a clutch in it because they thought the uh, thought it needed a clutch or it needed a rear end. Who knows? Why doesn't that come out of there? Probably because it's seized to itself. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice cloud of rust dust. Oh yeah, she's real good. We'll hit her with a DA real quick. Clean her up. Code good. So that's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, that's right. I hate all automotive manufacturers equally. So you Ford guys that need a hug right now. I'm sorry, you're just going to have to go ask your uh, Uncle Rick for a hug. But they have to pull the harmonic balance off to pull this engine mount off? Oh, come on. I know it's something you never got to replace. And then it had a 5 16 bolt, a 3 8 bolt, and a 7 16 bolt. Hold it on there. You know, don't make them all 3 8 or anything. Rant over. Oh, and if you're going to pull harmonic balancers, get a harmonic balancer puller like that. They also work great for steering wheels. And uh, don't borrow your neighbors and never bring it back. And if you have one, don't borrow it out because your buddies screw up the threads or never bring them back. It's for you, Farmstead. Sure glad I had to beg for this thing back. All right, I think we're about done with, I mean, I know we forgot something, but yeah, we should probably just grab this stuff while we're here for the uh, Jenny set. Cause I know we're gonna need A, the generator and B, a couple of the brackets, I think. But I'm gonna just set her over in the corner next to Duff's sleeping shack over there and uh rob whatever else we need off of it oh, god that's a good heat tape job fiberglass work some glass packs should work for your crossover pipe balancer is different too on that one. Was it a dual groove? Either way, we should look at that. It looks like we got to uh, plug an oil passage over here. I'm guessing that's where that oil stuff drained to and uh, that broke off so we're gonna have to dig that out. Is this freeze plug rusted out? Probably. Yep. Glad I noticed that. Awesome. Well, so is that one. Gosh dang it. I'm wondering about that one in the back. Oh, it's just snowballs. So we gotta do freeze plugs. We gotta figure out why this road draft tube just kind of flops there. Tell you what, definitely need a sandwich tonight. All right, see you guys and gals tomorrow. Tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, tomorrow is only a day away. Don't quit your day job. All right, let's get these uh, frost plugs repaired in this oil pressure. I think it's oil pressure, whatever it is. We're gonna fix it, right Duff? Plug it, either get it tied back into where it needs to be. Yeah, we're gonna do some things. 
really thinking about pressure washing this. It's actually uh, pretty decent. It's only like uh, 12 degrees out today. Fahrenheit seasons. Okay, frost plugs. Let's do that. Yep, yep. Man, it's uh, really clean up top here. So this must have been some type of kit where you got these hollow bolts in your kit. Looks like it came with that spacer too that has since come loose. So I think we're gonna open up, I don't know if we're gonna open that one up. I got some other Y blocks around. And we're gonna steal the two standard bolts and then I think you just ditch this spacer. And the factory oiling should take care of this. I would have left this all hooked up had I not uh, messed it all up. I thought this was just like an eighth inch pipe plug or something, but turns out not so much. Well, shoot, that was kind of an ugly setup as well. So yeah, we should be fine without it. Everything looks pretty clean in here. I think these things had upper oiling issues and that was part of the reason for this, but we call it good. Also, there's a lot of crap inside of the block, so probably should pressure wash it and try to get that crap out of there so we don't have cooling issues and we don't rot out our new freeze plugs, provided we got some new ones on the shelf. I hope we do. Hokely dokely. Hokely dokely. On to the other side. And then, uh, yeah, we gotta go find some parts before it gets dark out. What do we got over here? Oh yeah, how did we not notice that that freeze plug was complete trash? It looks like we're gonna have to uh, block where this heater hose or block heater or whatever went too. Hopefully that snaps off too, because we're really killing it on getting bolts out that have been snapped off. This was that oil plug in the side of the block on the other side. Remind me to plug that. Alrighty. Here's the water pump is seized. Usually they're not stuck too bad, so there a little pipe wrench here, freezer right up. Just kidding. I did find some freeze plugs in my collection. So hopefully we're good there. Don't you want to turn again? I guess not. Ideally, we would uh, just put a new water pump on, but we don't have one of those, do we, Duff? Nope. How can we make that turn? Blocking player's time? Oh, I saw a budge. There we go. I'm sure the bearings and seals are real good inside of that thing. Ew. Oh. She's real growly. Suppose we should just go ahead and take that right off. Oh man. Itchy and scratchy shell right there. Well, our other one sounds pretty good, so. Be easier to swap here than in the vehicle, I guess, and we'll just have to cobble together a gasket. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Chewy is it inside the thermostat housing. Oh man, I'm really starting to wonder. We're gonna have this whole engine apart by the time we're done. We could have just as well went through it. Oh man, glad we did that because that fitting right there rusted right off. You can see just how rusty it is inside the water pump housing. Yuck. None of that got into the crankcase. And of course, 
And that rotted out too. So this thing was sitting in a building for decades, so I don't know how it could have got so rusty inside of coolant passages, but that's part of the thermostat housing. So we'll have to rob that off another engine. Awesome. It just keeps stacking up. Boy, have I ever told you how much I really love Y blocks? Because I do. So, so much. Don't snap off. Well, we got to get the heat out for these anyway, so we should probably heat this other one up because uh, we snap rude that guy right off. And here's what we're dealing with. Hopefully I can put a little heat into that manifold. Just clamp onto that. Even the uh, base of this heater fitting is rusty. I don't know what was in this engine, but it's not good. So we got the torch out. Let's heat up these two, because exhaust bolts just usually hate us, so. Take care of those when we're at it. This one was actually a brass nut, so that's pretty awesome. That's what I like to put on exhaust bolts, because they come off. I don't really know what's left here. Should stick a valve cover on it before we pressure wash it. So I'll go grab one of those bolts, and I'm gonna wash it before it gets dark, hopefully. So I'm really starting to question my life decisions. I got another engine outside. I got that stud out of there. I wonder if I got, I grabbed two of them out of it. Anyway, the other one's around here somewhere. Right here, it's just a 5 16 stud. Of course, on one end, fine on the other. So that, you know, let's stick them both in while we got it here and we got the tools out. So I pulled this valve cover off. Of course, that one was kind of dinged up. But this bolt was loose for the rocker shaft. And kind of screwed up not a big deal right and then i was like huh there's no push rods and if i was going to steal them out of an engine i feel like i would have stole them out of that other engine that tried lighting the shop on fire so when we had this thing running because we did have this running on the floor we were running on seven cylinders so really i'm questioning all this right now why are these missing? And uh, is this thing worth putting in? <sighs> why blocks? Why, why, why? Well, I guess we'll go grab a couple of push rods out of that other engine. See if we can't get this bolt threaded back in. Keep questioning our life decisions. Why are those? Oh, they are there. They're what they, they dropped way down inside. How does that happen? That's interesting. Great. Wonder how bent up they are. So the plot thickens. Uh, I do believe. That rocker shaft is supposed to be one piece all the way across. It's definitely not a machined surface. Maybe that got broke when I was dragging it out of the snow. I don't see how. Plus you can see how that thread is all galled up on that bolt. So that has been running like that for some time. I wish I could figure out the history on this thing. I'm gonna get those out of there somehow. So we dug this guy out of a parts engine we picked up this fall. It looks pretty clean actually. Uh, part number is the same, 575-1066 on the rocker arms. They did make a couple of different rocker arms. I think there's what, like the 57s are the one everybody wants, or like a 1.5 ratio or a 1 to 5 ratio or something like that. That's a little bit different, but these are the same part numbers so they should just swap right over. I did get the push rods fished out of there. I don't know what happened. Maybe, yeah, me pulling on it or whatever, pulling on this thing broke something, or I don't know what happened. Seemed like it was running better than on seven when we had it going, but let's go back and check the video. 
So let's stick this rocker shaft on it. And then Duff ran out to boom tubes, got a uh, flywheel surfaced, resurfaced because I just don't like the way this thing looked. And as crusty as it is inside that block, let's knock that rear frost, frost freaking, freaking, freaking. Let's knock that rear frost plug out and uh, hose around in there a bit while we're washing it. We're out of daylight, so we're gonna be pressure washing in the dark or waiting until tomorrow. But yeah, let's uh, get this thing knocked back together so we can at least pressure wash it. I did check, threads are good on this one, so. Mucho goodo. Well, I think we got her brought as good as we're gonna get. She's ready for some washing. And really, I would just throw this thing back together, but all that crud that was in the uh, coolant passages, we gotta get that out. So if we're gonna try to flush that out, we might as well pressure wash the rest of it. Cause you guys know just how much I love pressure washing. If you wanna see pressure washing, go check out Puddin's Fab Shop. Old Puddin, he is the pressure washing king. King of Dotsons, king of carburetors, king of pressure washing. And he can have them all. All right, Duff, I wish you had thumbs so you could, well, you just need a pointer finger to pressure wash. Do I love pressure washing, especially when it's 10 degrees and it's dark out. But if you're building a shop, make sure you uh, A, put an outside light on, B, put water, and C, hot water. It really cuts through that grease. Way gooder. I gotta clean up this mess. I'm ruining all my clothes. I bet my beard isn't frozen either. So, while that thing is drying off, we're gonna pull the water pump, thermostat housing, exhaust manifold. That's it. Dipstick, we'll get that out of there. Duff can get that. Off of this thing so that, uh, you put it on that thing. Yeah, maybe we'll use the torch to dry myself out, huh Duff? Yeah, all right. Well, I grabbed a couple intake bolts too, because I think we lifted that one with that. Oh yeah, that, that's how we lifted that one one other previous time because the carburetor wasn't off of it. So I think we're pretty much done with this guy. Well, I think we're gonna have to grab the coil because of course the coil's missing because it's always the freaking coil missing. But you're getting pretty close. Probably have to steal a couple valve cover nuts. I might steal those other valve covers too because this side, uh, we did the old English uh, bar stool. Didn't get her real straight. You know, rubber don't want to slide in there, and you always want to make sure your rubber's in place. We're getting there. I think, uh, I wish we had a water pump and a gasket. I don't know what we're gonna do there for a gasket. I really hate just using the old silicone, but that's what uh, they did on that last one. 
there's no gasket on that engine and uh, there's a whole bunch of silicone here and that thing's pretty chewy in there duff real chewy that's what we got we're gonna go with it this nipple's in a lot better shape than the other one as is the uh, thermostat housing nipple so we should be good to go there we'll even put a new chunk of hose between those two and it looks like these ran exhaust manifold gaskets they were on both engines anyway so I might go dig through my stash I might have one of those maybe seems like I had a bunch of y-block gaskets at one point but ready to start sticking her back together Freshly resurfaced flywheel from, oh, son of a biscuit. Let's flip that ring gear around. I'm sure you guys really want to see how I do that. So let's do that. So I guess we're just going to tap around it until that ring gear comes off, hopefully. I'm use a brass drift. I don't know why. Because it's nice and girthy. So it's going to be just the perfect width, maybe. Whew, look at that. Now, just need more hands. Slide this back on the other way. It's just that easy. Usually you got to heat them up when they're new, but uh, since we're just flipping around right here quick, we should have them all the right size and shape. I don't want to eat it, but I think we're going to have to. All right, we got our uh, rosebud on the old Smith here, and uh, we're going to give a little heat to that thing, maybe. And then it's just going to drop right on, poof. Just that easy, right, Duff? Yeah, right. You want to keep the heat consistent. You want hot spots. You don't want to burn your nice stool. There, you see it almost dropping on? Woo! She just about on there. There. Look at that. You can almost... Can we spin it? Can we spin it? Do we have any spinning devices here? I'm not gonna burn my finger on. Well, if you do it right, it should spin right in place. I say it a million times, a little heat goes a long ways. We'll let that cool down a bit. We got more tools. All right, make sure our mounting surface is cleanish. I did check that pilot bearing. And we got some blue Loctite on our hardware. It says it should be torqued to 75 to 85 foot-pounds according to the interwebs. And uh, so we're just appeasing West and all the other masses out there. So let's stick this thing on there and torque them down. Let me guess, this thing only goes on one way? Sure enough. Why couldn't Ford just put a dowel pin in there like the rest of the world does? Why would four of the six go in? Make it so one goes and none of the rest? Nope. Three. Nope. This is the last way that it can go on there. Of course, it's always the last possible combination. Oh, yeah. 
uh, remanufactured our remanufactured clutch by uh, specialists. Mom always said we were special, right, Duff? So now we're going to use our handy dandy alignment tool. We got the right size adapter on the end here. This just centers it up. So basically, how your clutch works is you got your pedal, which is hooked to linkage that pushes on your clutch fork, which pushes on your throw all bearing, which pushes on these three arms here. And there's two different styles of clutch. Can we mangle that arm? That one looks bent. We should straighten that. And uh, when that pushes on it, it takes tension off your clutch disc, which is hooked up to your transmission, and that uh, disconnects. It allows this to slip in there. Otherwise, the springs in here, right there, clamp against this. And that's what makes your vehicle move, for uh, lack of better terminology. And this alignment tool gets you all centered up in there, so it should be ready to slide on when we install it. I'm sure somebody's got a way better explanation for clutches than we got. And this clutch is out of the pickup and the flywheel is out of the or off this engine. So I'm hoping they bolt up the same. Sure looks like we're doing okay. You don't want to over torque these little 5 16 bolts. I don't know if I, I'm sure I showed you in the video for the King, but these clutch bolts, they're real short bolts, but they don't have threads all the way. So that way you can get some bolt stretch in there for your clamp load. Because uh, this has got to hold the tension of all these valve springs in there. I don't know, there's like 15 or 20 of them in there. So you want it good and tight. You make sure that's centered before you snug them up. And because we don't want to do this again, I'm going to go find out what the torque specs are on this. Looks like we're going with 20 foot pounds on these little 5 16 guys. Straighten that arm out. I don't know how that got bent. Oh, that should snap. Ooh. I'll just leave it at that. Clutch is done. I did uh, scrape up some mystery oil filter for a Ford to put on here. I'm gonna put plugs in here for draining the block out. Did you see all the crap that come out of this thing when I pressure washed it? There's a lot of rust in there. Hopefully, we got most of it. So I'm going to find some pipe plugs for them. Dug through the uh, Morrissey archives and we found a Y-block exhaust manifold gasket and another Y-block exhaust manifold gasket. We even found a pair of valve cover gaskets, so uh, we can upgrade those. Let's get this manifold out of here though. How am I going to do this? By golly, it fits even. There's two gaskets on this heat riser. And the inside one is uh, looking pretty chewy. But I don't want to take that apart. It does not look like any fun. You gonna give them an update? All right. So I did a couple things off camera. Uh, made a new primary wire. Is that what that's called? Goes from the uh, distributor to the coil. Stole the coil off that other engine, got that mounted up. And the uh, throttle cable return spring, we got that sucker on there. Yeah, uh, we gotta put a dipstick on it, fill it with oil. I'm gonna swap these valve covers out because Obviously this one isn't going to seal because the valve covers hooeyed up and I got those new gaskets So we'll just go ahead and put those in there and man. Oh, yeah, we got to do uh, That front engine mount. Let's get that on there and the generator and all that stuff Sound like a good idea I'm sick of working on this thing on this engine stand. So let's uh, get her slammed in there once we get it slid in it Should be pretty easy famous last words, right? Ready to press our I'm on a balance, balancer dampener lower pulley combination on there. And we're going with the one that matches this engine that was on this engine, just in case there was something different about it. Because you know, 
cord things. You're not supposed to just beat these on with a hammer, I guess. Who'd have thunk? So we got this here installer. So it's basically just a big threaded rod with a, I don't know, area you can hold on the end with a wrench. And we got a nut to go up those threads. And then this is basically just a bearing so that that nut isn't pushing against a harmonic balancer. And then there's a little threaded insert adapter in the end. We chose for the threads that we have, which are, let me check, 9 16 18. 9 16 fine thread. So we just stick that in there, thread her in. We got a wrench that fits that. Should, because we got every freaking wrench in the toolbox out. That threaded in all the way. We gotta thread this nut in, but I don't know how we're gonna get to that once it's. Oh, yeah, we should be alright. And that's an inch and a quarter. Hopefully it doesn't pull the threads out of the crankshaft, because then I'll be real happy. And then I usually like to grab this upper pulley, put that on there, and that'll give me an indicator on how far in I gotta go. Because you can't go too far. Engine's turning over. It looks like it's about lined up, so that's what you're gonna get. Now, hopefully, you can just spin everything back out of there. This is a theory. And there you go. Now we just gotta put our crankshaft bolt in there. We'll go get the torque specs on that too. And that wraps that up. All right. Put some troil in there to lube up them threads. 90 foot pounds is what the interwebs is telling me on this. Thanks, Hefe, for being the uh, Flywheel Turner sponsor. He sent me this uh, replacement Snap On one. Snap On did warranty the one that I had. They even had one on the truck. So we got two now. Oh, I wish Duff had thumbs. Just don't smack my teeth on this exhaust one. Right Good enough for the girls we go with. Alright, let's stick a Jenny on it. Guaranteed to leak, right? Yeah, probably. Oh man, we're getting close. All right, just uh, check my list. I'm a fan of lists, and uh, this is all we really got other than oil. And I think we'll just wait to stick oil in it until it's in there. I would like to find a different drain plug because this one is all buggered up. I think it was sitting on a dirt floor and it just kind of rusted away. So, but the thing is, I can't really change the drain plug without, I can't steal out of that engine without picking that engine up, and my cherry picker is currently picking this up. So once we get it set in place, if I remember, I'll steal the drain plug out of that one. Do the old schwapperoo. The oil was pretty full of water, I didn't show that either. Uh, probably from pressure washing, and a combination of sitting outside without being covered for the last nine months or whatever. It was clean water though, so there's that. Yeah, I think we're ready to slide this thing in. Hopefully that goes swimmingly. Right? I don't know why it wouldn't. Here goes nothing.
Well, we got our stuffed in there. Mickelson Racing had to bring some race car wheels over and take the rubber valve stem out and put some metal ones in there because apparently to go fast. To get onto a track at Sick Week, he's probably down there doing that now while this video's airing. Uh, you gotta have metal valve stems, race car things. So anyway, time to just perfectly when he showed up. So uh, we got this thing stuffed in there. Went in there surprisingly well. Got the two bolts in the uh, bell housing, on the top in. We got the engine mount in the front. So I'm gonna go underneath there now, because that's usually what I like to do is go underneath. Because sometimes if you don't have something lined up, you gotta pull it back out. And I'd sure hate to get everything done up here and then go underneath, find out you can't get a bell housing bolt in or you don't have the clutch fork, right? Also, before he got here, I uh, greased the uh, clutch and the throw bearing actually has a grease circ on it too. And I sprayed some luby doob on the input shaft so that slid in there nice. So I'm going to go underneath, hook up the exhaust, put the starter on, uh, put those bell housing bolts in, hook up the clutch, all that good stuff. So really nothing to see there. So you guys probably aren't going to see much. You're going to see me in a minute coming back up here and yeah, we'll pull that lift plate off, do the carburetor. Wire up the distributor, wire up the uh, Jenny radiator, belt, fan, fuel pump, all that good stuff. So I'm going to go underneath and do the fun stuff. It's not fun. Look at this, it's even got the uh, Puddin Fab Shop speed holes in it. Just in case you're wondering what year it is, she's a 62. Is that just a coincidence that 62 is stamped in there twice? No, oh, it's a 31 over here, half of that. All right, get to work. Oh yeah, the gray, Zeus the Gray Ghost came over with Mickelson. Check out his channel, Mickelson Racing. Although, Zeus should have his own channel. So Duffy's all tuckered out now. Starter's on, bell housing bolts are in, exhaust is hooked up, clutch is hooked up. So everything's done under there, other than I should check some fluids if we get it running. And the transmission and the transfer case. And obviously we're gonna have to rip into that rear differential. Should check the front one as well. And there's an inspection cover, we'll put that in place. Maybe. And uh, we should swap out that drain plug. So we got a couple things to go back under there, but good enough to keep rolling. Two of the plug wires were off, so there's about a 90% chance that I got those two screwed up. So when this runs like garbage, you guys just scream at the screen real loud. Mortsky, flip those two plug wires around. We're gonna go uh, onto the carburetor and the wiring up here and the cooling system. All that stuff. This is GoPro is acting up, such as they do. So I don't know what got uh, cut in and what didn't. We got our generator all wired up. Ready to stick our carburetor on. I forgot to uh, steal the temperature sender out of that other engine, so we'll have to do that yet. Coil's wired in. I was gonna steal the carburetor off that other engine, the original engine. Seems how this is a 62 carburetor, match this pickup, but I thought, wow, since we got it off, let's stick an accelerator pump on. Look at this guy, she's got a square nut, she's got some washers on there. These Hollies use this it's not like a square bolt pattern, it's rectangular. And I got the square ones, but I don't have the rectangular one on hand, so I think we'll just wing it, throw this on there. If it don't work, we'll try the other one. But the reason I wanted to use this one is because then it's got the same choke geometry stuff, and we screwed up the choke bracketry on the other one. And that fitting looks like she's uh, threaded in there, crooked like. Awesome. This is why I hate carburetors, because it's... I don't hate carburetors. I hate idiots who think they can work on carburetors. Not like I'm good at it, like pudding, but... Anytime anybody's worked on anything, it's just all cowboyed up. It's pretty fantastic there. Square nut. Ugh. Maybe, maybe we'll just stick that other one on there, and then uh, we can rebuild this one. Because clearly, this one needed some attention back in the day, so I'm sure it's not any better. Rape meow. Now what is so damn funny? And we know that other one kind of ran. We'll just uh, won't have a choke. Great. Yeah, the choke blinkage is over here on this one. We busted that all to snot. I was hoping we could just steal the bracketry off that other one and put on here, but it's kind of altogether different. 
but at least this has got the right screws. So we got that going for us. What's this one list as? 1835. The tag isn't on here for the year, but we're putting it on there. Looks like uh, the throttle linkage hookups is about the same. It's a little bit different for the return spring, but we can figure that out. And then we can use the sweet air cleaner that was on this thing. Man, was that some nasty oil and she was a bit over full. There's the drain plug that was out of this other engine. You can see she sat in the dirt for a while. And the plug out of this engine was all rusty on the inside from some of the water that was in there. Imagine that. Just about got this wrapped up. We dump oil in it. Maybe we'll even try to get fired up yet tonight. It's getting pretty late, but I kind of want to hear this thing run again. How about you? That was fun to get out of there. You can see this is the plug that came out of the engine that was in this pickup. She's uh, pretty rusty, rear on the ends of the threads. The plot thickens. This plug is longer, and I think it hits the oil pump pickup. So, Duff said just knob the end off of that thing and stuff it in there, since it's already half rotted off anyway. So I guess that's what we're going to do. Because Duff is the boss for dumb. So apparently that pickup engine has a different pickup than this truck engine or whatever, huh? That's pretty silly, huh, Duff? Silly Fords. I just want to get some oil in this thing. Okay. I don't know who TR is, but I think this is a sign I need to go buy one of those new Dodge TRXs. TR. And TRX. Right there. All right. Lobbing this off. All right, that should clear, right, Duff? Let's whammy that in there. Threads still even look good. Perfect. All right, let's stick some oil in this beast. We got some uh, Delo 400 XLE 10W30. Cause I got a pallet of this stuff. So get used to seeing it. It's heavy duty diesel engine oil. I don't know if it's got the zinc in it, so we're gonna put some uh, Rizaline zinc additive as well. Really plug them catalytic converters up. Using classic cars, hot rods, racing, off-road, and more. Well, let's hope this thing is off-road ready by the time we're done. Why do I hear something running out? Just paranoia. Yes, I remember to put the plug in, Duff. No, I think we just gotta put a battery in it. Give her some hot sauce. So she lights off. No, we can't go for a ride yet. We got uh, Florida Man stuffed in here. These battery cables are way undersized. And they're in pretty sad shape. Let's see if we can get her to crank over. Got the loser switch hooked up here. Well, it's the new one. I haven't even tried this one yet. Well, that's not good. I always pick the wrong terminal on here. I think we got it now. The light even lights up on this one. Woohoo! <laughs> Getting there, Duff. Now we just got to see if the key switch gives us power to the coil. And get some hot sauce. Then we'll get it to fire. And then I think we're calling it a night because it's bedtime and I haven't ate supper yet. So let's get this show on the road. I hate firing these things up before you're gonna leave the shop for the night, but 
I want to hook the battery. This one should be good. I'm not going to get it very warm. don't have any coolant in it yet either. Yeah, no rides. Sorry, man. All right, I'm going to go check for power over there. Key switch is super sticky. We got power there, though. So, try some hot sauce. All right, Let's see if this thing will flare up for the first time in what, 1983, so what's that, 39 years? We did have this engine running about a year ago, so it should take right off, right? Provided I didn't get those two plug wires flipped around or screw anything else up. Here we go, slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Sparkage. Guess we'll have to give points to the old Mordsky flick. Oh, it's all wet in here. From the uh, pressure washing. Another reason we don't do that. Let's uh, dry it out a little bit, maybe? Got a little sparkage going. Should be alright. Maybe. Probably not. Oh, we just busted the tang off the rotor. Dang it. Well, this rotor looks way different, but looks like it's the same concept. Hopefully it works. Hopefully that clip didn't end up, or that tang didn't end up inside the distributor. Give us a headache, that'd be great. Kind of like losing the screw to your points, killing your distributor. Like on the old 60 Impal there. Always something. Now let's see if we got some sparkage. Pretty faint, but we got spark at least. All right, we got spark, it's pretty faint. Let's see if it pops off. Slingshot, engage. Oh, she wants to go. Well, Duff's having some breakfast. We got the schlong stuffed down the fuel filler neck. And, uh, it's pretty good down there. There's a little dust, but no rust. And we'll take dust over rust any day, won't we, Duff? Oh yeah, sure will. So, I think we're gonna put gas in this thing. I do have a clear fuel filter in line so we can keep an eye on what's going on and if it gets full of crap, we can either swap tanks or clean this tank or swap a fuel filter. I think we're gonna go through a couple filters, but I think it'll be all right. If this was a new carburetor, I'd be pretty upset if we filled the carburetor full of stuff, but clearly this one is not new. And I don't know if that fuel pump's even gonna do anything. And there's a filter on the bottom of that fuel pump. This is the pump that was on this engine. The, the one that's on this engine doesn't have the filter on it. It's kind of a little bit cleaner looking pump, but either way, that one's probably dried up. Just as bad as this one, there's a diaphragm in there, and that's what, there's a lobe on the camshaft that runs an arm on the fuel pump that goes up and down, that pushes the diaphragm, that goes, suck, squeeze, it pressurizes the fuel. Pumpage. So, that diaphragm goes bad. It's like a rubber disc about yay big, and of course, just like tires or wheel cylinders, anything seal, front and rear main seals, that type of stuff. Dries up, gets hard. You move it a few times, brakes, doesn't work. No more pumpy pump. So I don't have much faith in that. Worst case scenario, we'll put a little clickety clack in line and then we'll be going again. So that should be addressed, fuel system. I think we're gonna go grab uh, five gallons of gas and dump her in there and crank her up again. Did you fill up the fuel tanks last time or are they all empty again? Yeah. Empty? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured you did. You're a lot of help, pal. Guess we'll go fill those up. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we got some gas in there. Let's see if we can't nurse it out the bottle and get it to pull some fuel up here. What are the odds of that? Yeah, not very good, is it? Look at that, she's pulling fuel. And we got no accelerator pump action, imagine that. Let's see if we're getting any fuel up here. Yep, we got pressure up here. But we're not getting any squirtage inside the carburetor. That I can see. I'm not a holly guy by any means, but I think you could spin this screw out here and check the fuel level. That'll tell us if our floats allowing fuel into the carburetor. Of course, nothing's coming out. So maybe our float's stuck? Oh no. I can see the float bobbing up and down in there, in fuel. So, I suppose that accelerator pump is just dried up. Weird. Really wish I had one of them on hand. What's that, Duff? Another debacle I should address? When he crosses his legs like that, it's something pretty serious. Oh yeah, sure enough, there's a fuel leak. Well, I suppose we better see what that is. Let's unlock our battery. I don't want any matches in the gas tank. Match in the gas tank. Boom, boom. Well, so much for that idea. Looks like the bottom of the tank's rusted out right there. On the outside. Hmm. Yeah, you were right. Shouldn't have tried this tank. Back to the good old boat tank days. I just can't catch a break. Now we gotta find a clean pan to catch $60 worth of gas. Yeah, I know, you told me not to do it. Well, that's the cleanest pan we got around here, so let's dump that coolant in there. Hopefully that doesn't leak. And we'll use that pan to catch the gas and recycle it. Well, that should only take several days to drain six gallons of gas through a three-ace hose via gravity. At least we're filtering it though, so it should be good again. Good still? Yeah, that's what I meant. I don't know what it is about uh, fuel draining, but it makes me have to take a leak. Let's go see if we can find a better carburetor, I guess. You got any ideas? You think that one's any better? Yeah, me either. All right, here goes nothing. Well, we could just couldn't leave well enough alone. We're still draining down there. Duff's keeping his distance. We got the boat tank and the clickety-clack hooked up. So we can't get some fire. Fire! <laughs> 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 Went back and looked at the video, and the accelerator pump was working on this thing. And we had to run it, kind of. But that does not mean it hasn't dried out since then. Which it appears to have. Oh, the fan's blowing gas all over when we got it running. Oops. 
I got smart and I put the gas can right underneath the fuel hose. That way I don't have to transfer it from the pan to the can. Work smarter, not harder, kids. I don't know if that carburetor is going to work for us or not. It seems like it runs better now that we have this pump hooked up. But Let's uh, mess with something else. That diff? Ugh. That should be fun to tear into. It's nice and low to the ground. Do you want to do it? Yeah, me either. Maybe we'll take and put this tank inside. Seems how we know we got to have it anyway. We got all the fuel drained. As much as we're going to get. That six gallon jug is just about full, so we must cut most of it. I'm sure there's some left in that tank. And we spilled hardly any Greta. How dare you! Just a non mentionable amount. It didn't make it to the lower drain for sure that we're parked over. So let's see if we can get this thing running a little bit better. I don't know. I don't want to swap carburetors because I don't really have much for carburetor options. Let's see what we can get. It's like it's not filling the bowl, but we know that it is. As soon as you try to bring it off idle. to goose it falls on its face so accelerator pump is definitely <laughs> yeah you gotta give her a shot to take off so we don't need that accelerator pump She don't run too bad. In case I haven't told you, needs an accelerator pump real bad. Let's get some coolant in it. And then uh, go from there. Let some smoke out of here too. Let's pull this heater hose out. Maybe she'll suck it in a little faster. Oh yeah. Big gulps. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. So I'm going to put a gallon of straight in, then I'll put a gallon of water. And then I'll mix a half gallon of water and a half gallon of coolant. So 50-50 mix at the end of the day. No, I'm not using distilled water. We can't afford that. I don't even know where you buy that. You buy that at the store? Probably. Just getting a little steamy up top here. Oh. Must be about full. Just thinking about it anyway. Just don't belch in my face. Oh, we got coolant up there. That's as high as we can get. That method anyway. So sometimes you'll get like a vapor lock or air lock or an air pocket. And uh, that'll keep you from getting full all the way. So, if you pull off a connection at the highest point, which in theory would be right here, but you're filling up the radiator, so as soon as that tank gets full, it's gonna 
run out. So usually I like to take a heater hose off. So it's got to all go to that one little spot versus you're dumping it in right here and it can just run out there. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean. Pull the heater hose off. Usually pull it off the heater core, the highest one. Or just pull the easiest one to get off. Because sometimes you'll think you got them full and you take it for a test drive. And the temp gauge won't peg, but she'll be pegged because the temp sending unit won't be sitting in any fluid. And therefore, it's not reading anything. And then uh, feel your top radiator hose to make sure that the thermostat's open. Man, you are a thirsty girl. So, I don't know what they call this. I don't know, spill proof funnel? So you just take this plug -a here. This thing's pretty freaking handy. A, it's huge, so even I have trouble spinning. You take this plug, stick it in there. Boop! And then you just take your half full jug of coolant. Slide this out. You spill a little bit, not much. And then you pull the plug out. You just drain right back into the jug, hardly spill anything. How neat is that? How neat is that? You just take the cap and the adapter off. Throw that right back in there, put the cap on. Spill proof funnel kit by Apollo. I don't know. Duff approved. Then after you mix up your coolant, make sure you label the back. Mix. My dad likes to write mix 50-50, but that's the only way that I ever mix coolant, so I would write 50-50. See, the mixture it's not bad. So if you will remember from the first installment, you could spin the drive shaft on this hunk of turd here, and the wheels don't turn. So there's clearly an issue in that big lug of a Ford 9-inch. So let's blow that apart, see what we can find, so that we can drive with the rear differential instead of just using the front provided the clutch and the transmission and the transfer case and all that stuff's any good. What say you, Duff? Should we get after it? Uh, these are a dropout center section, I guess what I call it, or a third member or a chunk. So you gotta jack it up, pull the wheels off. There's four bolts on the back of each backing plate. You take those out, or they're bolt in axle, and uh, slide the axle out a few inches on each side. And then you take the drive shaft off, take the bolts out of that center chunk, you can roll the whole thing out of there and make a small nest doing so. So that's what we're going to do. You want to grab the jack? It is rough being you. So the brakes look pretty good. There's a lot of meat left there. All grooved up for the drums. Ooh, real grooved up. So hopefully drums are cheap. But the springs and everything look pretty clean. Axle seal does not look like it was leaking yet. So there's this hole here, and there's one bolt there, one there, one there, and one there. Take those four bolts out, and we should be able to slide this axle out. We might get a little bit of stinky 80, 90 grease, so you might want to have a pan out here. Also, use a jack stand. And we should probably drain the center section too, because for sure when we pull the center chunk out. Well, not for sure, but in theory there should be grease in there. And I don't know what's factory, if this lift block is factory. Kind of looks like it is. But that is a heck of a stack of leaves. And this one almost looks like an angled shim in there, or the end of a regular leaf spring cut off and put in there. I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. But let's get this axle out. Now, depending on how stuck this axle is, oh yeah, slide right out. Got to be careful sliding out because there is a seal in there. I think these have an inner seal. I'm gonna chew that all up. See, it's got the bearing belt right onto it. So you don't even have to slide it out this far. I don't know, probably four inches. You can slide it out. That's all you need to do. Now let's go do the other side. Again, super grooved up. Well, they got some. Washers installed on the ends of the axle studs here for some reason. They break those off at one time and they got too long a shank on them. Well, 
You can see that the spring that goes inside of the seal on the inside is kind of flopping around here, so that's probably not good. It could probably use an axle seal. But it wasn't leaking. Well, not that bad anyway. It was. Some extra parts in here. Oh my gosh, that shock is just Ray Charles welded on. Held there with hopes and dreams. Oh, I remember how beat to crap this thing was. Look at how the shock is just thrashed. Differential's all beat up. This thing has been over some stuff. If old pumpkin patch here could talk. What's that Charlie Brown movie? World's Largest Pumpkin? I don't know. That one. Maybe we should name it after that. The Great Pumpkin? The Great Pumpkin rises out of his pumpkin patch and flies through the air with his bag of toys for all the children. You must be crazy. Sure. All right, let's uh, go pull a drive shaft and drain the diff and pull a center chunk. So I counted all the teeth on the ring gear. Uh, they call this a nine inch because that's a nine inch ring gear. 8.8 .8 would be 8.8 .8 inches, eight inch, eight inch, 7.5, 7.5 inch. Anyway, counted the teeth on the ring gear, it's 35. Counted the teeth on the pinion and it's nine. 35 divided by nine is a 389, 3.888888, so it's 389, right Duff? So, according to the interwebs, these are 7 16 fine thread bolt. Oh, let's see if these will thread in there. Maybe we can save this thing. Maybe. We shall see. You got any faith? Yeah, me either. Seems like I remember it being a left hand thread or some stupid thing. What the heck, thread right in. Don't well, ask me why my hardware store carries green bolts, because I don't know. We don't see color around here. I know, I should be putting Loctite on these, but let's be honest. I'm guessing this thing's going to be a little bit growly after what she's gone through. I mean, I would be. Oh, that one might not go. We might not be able to get them all. And now it doesn't turn. So there's that. What's your problem? Well, using an 11 16 socket on a 5 base bolt is probably not a good idea. Why is it it's stiff once you tighten them up? up on the pan. I don't know, really struggling here kids. This is way above my pay grade. Good as new! For dumb. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure this rear end probably has got some issues. It's a lot better than it was. I'm gonna go underneath and we're gonna see if we can't fish all the shrapnel out of there and uh, clean up the gasket mating surface and we'll uh, put some right stuff on this thing and whammy her back together. Whammy! These U-bolts did not want to come out. I'm sure that's good for the threads. Let's see what's behind door number nine inch. One bolt. Three. Four. Five. Uh, some unidentified shrapnel. Looks like an important machine pin of sorts. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many is there? Oh, that is so metallic y. We gotta get that old stuff out of there. Not gonna be good for business leaving it in there. What would Ernest say? Ew. Some kid probably just went through this rear end and was so proud of himself. But he should have went, not went and got a soda 
in between tightening up all the bolts on the ring gear. Judging by the amount of grease, he got a few miles out of it for it. Decided to exit stage left. Clean gasket surface is a happy gasket surface. All right, now let's go clean up the center section. We'll drop that back in. Love this smell 89 in the morning. All right, let's stick this stinky thing back in place. Oh. Go to your home. Do you know where your home is? Go home! That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! I think these rear ends are getting heavier as I get older. <sighs> oh man, all our pins fell out. Needles. They didn't fall out, they just fell out of place. Oh, almost got it. Good enough, I think. Maybe not. Well, it's still one down there. Oh, son of a biscuit. Go back in there. Needles falling out. Crapola. Oh! She's gonna need a U joint. But we ain't gonna put one in. Putting needles back with bearing caps is a favorite hobby of mine. We enjoy watching me do it as much as I enjoy doing it. Maybe we'll put a little dab of grease in there. Probably not. Probably not. Now we should just have to slide our axles in and bolt everything back up. Should be good to go. So you kind of got to hold the axle up to get her lined up into the center section. There you go. Make sure all your bolts are lined up for your bearing retainer plate. You don't want to go over that bolt for some reason. Let's see if we can't persuade it. Maybe we got it off 180 degrees. I doubt it. Anything's possible. I just don't want to go over that stud. Put the old valve persuader on it. Yeah, we got it locked into place. A retainer plate, bearing retainer. Watch him a dink. You know what I mean. Now we gotta start these fine thread half inch nuts. So we didn't screw up the threads. So it turns out I did have number three and four spark plug wires swapped around, so maybe it'll run even better now. See, so it'll start without having to prime it. I don't think so.
We melted our new loser switch wire. First time we used it. We got the uh, dirty needle out. Did the old reverse bleed with some success. That side seemed good. This side, I couldn't get fluid to go up there. So I don't know if the brake hose is collapsed or pinched or what. Duff is loving it. You wanna hit that pedal? See if it's feels brakey. Yeah, you're a lot of help. All right, I'll do it. Oh my gosh. It might be a two pumper, but Heck yeah! Heck yeah, buddy! We got brakes, duffers! Alright. I think that's uh, about it. I'm gonna clean up a little bit. And uh, we're gonna do this. Yeah, we're gonna have a hood. It's just gonna be in the back of the pickup. That's a safer spot for it, probably. We should get those cinder blocks out of there. We don't need those flopping around when we're doing off-road things and such. What else is going to fall off? Clearly we don't have any brake or tail lights or a tailgate latch. All right, test drive time after having this thing for a year and a half. You excited? Of course you are. All right, what up? Do this. Ugh. This isn't gonna go well. I just can't move my head. Don't look at me like that. I should have taken this headliner out. Fix that visor. Duff says roll the windows down. It's a tropical 19 degrees out. So, let's do this. We made it about five feet. I just want to see if four-wheel drive's working. <laughs> Either the clutch is slipping or the tire's spinning. Wow. We've got some short legs in first. We might be in low range too, I don't know. Generator lights on. That's good. Speedo does not work. Why is this thing so ungodly loud? It's got more exhaust than most of us now. Maybe it's because we don't have a hood. Oh, that is a that shifter is just all floppy now. My groin is on the steering wheel. Seating position is not ideal in this thing. But hey, first time on the road in 39 years. We'll take it. Front diff, fanny transfer case, they were all full. Fanny was really oily, so she's been leaking a bit. It's full, so we're gonna run it. Nothing's growling. Oh man, every time I want to shift, I grab that four-wheel drive lever. Find a corner, Duff? Not really. We need four wool. Now we're in four high.
feeding dog. Speaking of feed, let's feed her the feeds. Diesel hedge? Hot day high five, Duff. Oh yeah, or just a face to the hand. All right. God, that was a lot of birds out there, huh, pal? Here's where the Y block sat all summer. Used to be a snow pile there. As you can see, we got some other engines. Nissans, another Y block, junk 223 Ford, good 223 Ford. The Duff's peeing on. There's another Y block over there that we don't know any history on. Yeah, we got some engine swaps to do around this place. But we got this 1962 Ford F100 4x4 back on the road for the first time in 39 years. Had to do an engine swap to do it, but what can I say? It deserved it. This pickup's pretty cool. Still needs a lot of work. I mean, the drivetrain is pretty roughed up. 
Uh, I didn't stick anything into the engine, so I'm sure it's going to need front rear main seals, tune up, carb needs going through. I put hoses and belts, all that good stuff on it. But we did it on a budget, like, like I said on the right end, like we put some hardware into this thing, some valve cover gaskets I had laying around and an exhaust gasket I had laying around. And that was about it. Otherwise it's just stuff we had laying around other than that Y block that I picked up. Kind of for this pickup, kind of not. But yeah, fortunately uh, I think that's where this project is gonna end. You know, hopefully one of you guys buys it, needs this thing, can uh, put it to good use, make it a project of your own. I think this thing would be really cool. I think the paint would buff out just awesome on this thing, just like we did on the 60. It's got a lot of dents in it, but it's just character. It's freaking super good for rust. But it's not for us. It's not in the cards right now. It just needs too much. And we got too much stuff over there. We got the Kings back on the road. We got we to gotta work on the other orange four-wheel drive, pull the tranny. Got to pull the engine on the unibody and put a freeze plug in the back end of that thing so it quits leaking. We got the two-wheel drive Blazer to mess with. We got Casper that pretty much just runs and drives. She's good. We got to do brakes in the 66 four-wheel drive. Rex, he's good. Got some 61s. We got some 61 content coming up. Maybe some 55 Chevy content. We can find a front clip for it. Yeah, we just got too many projects. Um, nobody buys it. Yeah, we'll bring it back again, maybe in another year. But I'll put a price on this thing down below. I do have a clear title in my name for it. You guys know just as much about it as I do. We've pretty much been all over this thing. It's a pretty cool old pickup. So I'll leave it at that. If you want this thing, more information down below, how to get a hold of us, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. Uh, if, if you want, uh, check out the uh, Duff approved membership. We do a lot of behind the scenes footage that we throw up there on a weekly basis. And we give you guys some discounts on some merch. And if you want some merch and you're not a member, go ahead and get some merch, that'd be cool. But I think that's about it. On to the next one. We just about lost the shop on this one. It's, that was a lot of work for uh, one week. What are we gonna drag in next? Should probably do that unibody since we got it halfway on the street. But I kind of want to work on my other orange Ford, seeing how we're on the orange Fords. Either way, it's it's probably gonna be a Ford, or maybe another '61 Chevy. I don't know. Remember, doesn't matter. You get it done, as long as you're having fun. You could have a lot of fun on this pickup. All right, Duff's out looking for roosters in the slough. I'm gonna. Uh, Put a hood on this thing. Oh yeah, you're gonna need to do some body work on a hood. There's plenty of body work there.